Hello, everybody. I'm Pastor Steve, and I'm here, and we're uh, at the church, and we're going to talk about Job, the book of Job, and uh, we're on chapter 2, and I want to finish, I want to just sort of bring you up to speed of what's going on. Remember, we're talking about Job and what an upstanding man he was, and uh, we started through chapter 1 that he was a, uh, a wealthy, honest, upright, religious, righteous, perfect man. And God seconded that explanation when we got down into the latter part of chapter 1. And then we go into the idea that Job is going to be put to the test because the Satan wants him, wants to test him. And God says, okay, test him, but don't hurt Job. And so he goes through the test, and it's just miserable on Job. You remember his, all, his, all of his animals were killed, his children were killed, and he's down. And, he, and here's what I bring all this up, because I want to tell you what Job says, because it's so meaningful. He says, I came naked from my mother's womb, and I will return naked when I leave. He says, and God gave me what I had, and the Lord has taken away. Praise the name of God. You know, you just have to say that is fortitude, that is character, and that is strength. And so Job lived up to the expectations of God and to the people who had said so much about him as being such a righteous character. So we're going to start chapter 2 today, and I'm going to, let me read the first verse. It says, One day the members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord. In other words, they're going to have a staff meeting, as it looks like. They're all come together. They're going to talk to Jesus. Tell them what's going on. Talk to Jesus. Talk to God. Tell them what's going on and say, um, tell them what the plan is, what, what they can do, and what they've been doing. And, and Satan comes in with them. And, and so the Lord says to the accuser, Satan came with them. He says, where have you come from? The Lord asked. It's kind of, it's kind of like, uh, I, I envision this if, God has this meeting of his, of they call him God's children, uh, the angels, and the Satan character shows up, and God said, where did you come from? And uh, Satan's going to say, well, Antrim says, I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. But, you know, I think God is such a gentleman, such a righteous person, such a good, on, he'd probably like to say, what are you doing here? You know, I don't, wh why are you here amongst us? But, he says, where did you come from? And Satan says, I've been patrolling the earth, just going top to bottom around. And, and so God says, the Lord said, asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? This is the exact quote he made in chapter one. He says, have you noticed my servant Job? He knew he had noticed his servant Job because Job went through all this trouble. He's, but he says, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity, even though you urged me to harm him without cause. God is giving him a pat on the back. My man Job's a good man. And you didn't get him last time when I said you could. He still said these same things. The Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. And he... Praise the name of the Lord when all this adversity landed upon him. So Satan comes back and replies to the Lord. He says, skin for skin. A man will give up everything he has to save his life, but reach down and take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. That skin for skin statement is a little different. As my reading, nobody really knows what that means, exactly. But the idea in the, the story is he says, um, skin for skin, I'm gonna say it means you're not gonna hurt me. If you hurt me, I'm going to retaliate. When you start actually physically hurting me, I'm going to retaliate. And so that's what Satan says about Job. If skin for skin, if I, you let me hurt him, he'll change his attitude. And verse 6, God says, all right, do with him as you please. The Lord said to Satan, but spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he didn't waste any time. He struck him from head to toe with terrible boils. 
Now, boils. I had to look up what boils. I thought I had a boil once when I was a kid and I thought it was on my arm. And from what I read about boils, it wouldn't, I mean, on my arm, on my hand. And from what I read about boils, they're not really on your hand. They're started by hair follicles and so forth. Who cares? It's not really important. What is important is that Job was struck with a miserable, miserable, painful disease. People in maybe my age group might think about things like, um, what is it? Scabs? Scabs? No. Um, a brain fade. I, I can relate to like poison oak when I was a little boy. I had it from head to toe and it was awful, miserable. Well, this is probably like poison oak on steroids. It really was a miserable experience for um, Job when he was going through this pain, very uncomfortable and painful. And it made him really sick. So Job got himself a piece, it's called a pot, a piece of broken pottery. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. He was sitting there and I, I went out to my garden and I found a broken pot and I just tried to imagine scraping these scabs and these pussy sores off, just trying to get all that yuck off and it kept, the pus kept coming and just miserable, just a miserable experience. And, and Job's wife, now see, Job is getting hit from every angle. Job's wife looks at him going through this, sitting in this ash heap. And she says to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Why don't you just curse God and die? Curse God and die. Now, that's a pretty hard, hard statement to take from your partner in life, you know, and she, but you, you gotta look at this. She had been beat up just as bad because we are one, you know, when you're married, you become one and you, uh, she's lost her children, she lost her wealth, and she's dealing with a very uncomfortable, very sick and probably really unhappy husband. And she just says, I hate to see you like this. Why don't you just curse God and die? You're gonna die anyway, get it over with. I guess, I mean, I'm not, I wasn't there, but I'm, there's just options. I don't think you can really, really take um, his wife to task for what she said. She had a very difficult time with what came down upon him and nobody understands this because understand this, where we're talking about the problems that are coming on to Job, he doesn't know that this talk is going on between Satan and God up there. He just saying. I wonder why this is happening to me, but praise the Lord, he's taking care of me and there is a reason for it. He had that faith. So he says, his wife says, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Jacob, and, and I, I really admire this reaction. He says to her, you talk like a foolish woman. You know one of those foolish women in the village? You're talking like her. He, or he could have says, would you just shut up? I don't see I have enough problems here. But he did not let his mouth overload his conscience, overload his mind. And he says, you're talking like one of the foolish women in the village. Um, should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? In other words, we've all heard this. You got to take the good with the bad. And there's, there are uh, sayings, you know, there, inside every silver lining, there's a or any cloud, you know, there's, there's problems going around and we need to accept them knowing, believing that God is control and in control. And that's what Job said. Should we accept only the good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all of this, here's the bottom line. He says, Job said nothing wrong. He let no evil come from his lips. He didn't curse God. He didn't curse his wife. He didn't curse anybody. He just says, I'm going to endure. And that he did. Now, we're going to change the, the, the scene a little bit here. Job is sitting in the ashes. He's scraping off the, the scabs and the pus with this pot shirt. And now, now his friends have gotten word. Job has three apparently really good friends that um, he's probably known for a long time. They are probably in the same upper escalons of society and they heard of Job's problems. Word travels fast. And so his three friends come to share in his anguish and they say, when these three friends of, of Job's heard of the tragedy that he had suffered, they got together and traveled from their home 
to comfort and console their friend, Job. Their names were Eliphaz, the Timonite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite. When they saw Job from a distance, they so remember, they come together, they make an arrangement, let's, let's go see Job, our friend Job. They got together, they went to this community in where Job was living, and they saw him in the distance, and they didn't even recognize him. They go, whoa, is that him? And so let me read it to you. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. Wailing loudly, they tore their robes, a common accepted practice of of mourning, of feeling sorry, they tore their robe and threw dust up in the air over their heads to show their grief. Now remember, they're experiencing to the, they're looking at their friend of this disease, I'm gonna call it a disease, he's, he's taken his toll on him, he may have lost weight, he may have, there could have been a lot of problems, for some reason they didn't recognize him. And they went to him and they sat on the ground with him and they sat there for seven days. It's a pretty nice thought when you think about it. These guys came together, they traveled to see him, they got near him, and they didn't say a word. They just sat there beside him and let him know that they're there. We're here for you. And they sat there for seven days and seven nights, and no one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. Now, Here's the story now. Job, this great man, is going through a problem. His friends come to be with him, and they have the best of intentions to come see him. And, and they're going to have a little talk with him, and that's where we're going to go next week. Next week, we're going to hear his friends speak to Job and what they think they can do to help him. And it is quite interesting, and it, it really delves into the inner thinking of why bad things happen, why people deal with them the way they do, and it just shows a lot of human character. And we're, we're gonna spend some time there, but right now, we're just gonna let it go that Job's friends are gonna sit there and spend seven days and seven nights with him and never say a word, but just give him the encouragement that we're here with you, buddy, and we're not gonna leave. So. I'm looking forward to coming back next week, and we're going to talk about what these men say, and um, it, it'll be interesting. Read chapter 3. That's where we're going to start, and we'll go from there, okay? So with that, I'm going to say thank you so much, and I'd like to say a brief prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time together. I thank you that our, your word is going forth and reaching people in the time of this shutdown, and that we are able to share your word and that in the process of sharing your word, we are going to come closer to you. And as we come closer to you, Lord, your word says you'll come closer to us. And when you come closer to us, we grow stronger and become more like Jesus. So Father, be with this community, be with this country, and be with this world as we're going through this terrible pandemic. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God loves you and so do we.